What is up guys and welcome back to another video. It's career mode time once again. You guys have been hounding me on Twitter and Instagram. We're finally back. Uh, this is episode number four. Plus 100. 104. Season 6. Uh, this is the Belgian Grand Prix. Go check out the previous video if you haven't already. That being the British Grand Prix. As you can see here, we had a close coming together. A close scare with uh, Alexander Albon in the Mercedes, who is making a charge for the championship. So too is Max Verstappen, Danny Kvyat. There are so many drivers now in the mix for this driver's championship win that I honestly can't call it. It is so close to the top of the order in terms of separating the teams pace-wise that uh, it really just comes down to the form of the driver on the race weekend itself. And that, for me, is so exciting. Uh, we're doing a ultimate break upgrade heading into this race. And that is going to go on in time for the start of the Belgian Grand Prix. I've been uh, leading up to this moment for the last few episodes. Uh, braking performance has been weak on our car uh, relative to the other teams. Simply because of how fast in a straight line we are. We don't have any brake upgrades applied. And, um, you know, if we didn't get this upgrade on today, or at least by Monza... We would have really been found out, and uh, it would have made life very, very tricky trying to stop for those heavy braking zones uh, on these power tracks. But uh, yeah, we've got the decision here. We are going to rush a weight redistribution upgrade in time for this race, and uh, hopefully that'll go on in time for the Belgian Grand Prix. So fast forwarding time now. We'll see if the uh, if the upgrades come on. We've got. Uh, a fuel positioning one, it looks like. They all actually went on uh, as we head into the mid-season break, which is uh, actually quite sick. We're going to do a drag reduction upgrade as well, that being a minor one. Uh, not enough time to get it on in time for Belgium, but they will go on in time for Monza. So plenty to look forward to there. But we now head into the race weekend itself for Spa. Uh, you can see on the forecast, we've got some rain scheduled for the race. So that's going to throw a spanner into the works. In terms of our performance index, we are still second, uh, just behind Mercedes, but we've actually made gains on them heading into this race. So uh, we should well and truly be in the mix to win this race. Um, Ferrari overtaking Alpha Tauri, who, by the way, are leading the Drivers' Championship through Danny Kvyat after he won the British Grand Prix. So, spoiler alert, Danny Kvyat is uh, well and truly becoming a force to be reckoned with in this season of career mode. What a redemption arc that would be for him to uh, to win an Alpha Tauri and upstage Red Bull. That would be sick. So let's hope for their sake they continue to develop their car. We're going to continue to develop ours, and we are not going to let up on the throttle. We're going to keep going until we win this Drivers' Championship, until we win the Constructors' Championship, and end... The F1 2020 driver career, my team career mode in style. But anyway, let's not get ahead of ourselves. It's time for quality. If you guys are enjoying this series, make sure you smash that like button. Let's me know that you guys want to see more episodes more often. And I tell you what, we're going to have to get these episodes out more often because we are literally running out of time before F1 2021 comes out. Uh, I made a tweet the other day. I think I, I said it was only three weeks to go until the game comes out. So, uh, yeah, I got to get a, a wriggle on, so to speak. So hopefully you guys enjoy the final few episodes of 2020 career mode. I've really enjoyed it. Clearly I have because I'm still going. Uh, like, I mean, the matter of weeks before the new game comes out, and we're, you know, continuing to extend the record for most career modes upload, uploaded on a single game. So, yeah, this is, uh, this has really been a game changer, F1 2020, and, uh, I'm really excited to see what F1 2021 is like with the whole breaking point as well. But anyway, back to this race, back to this race weekend, this qualifying session, we are currently up by six tenths, seven tenths on our bank of time set on a used set of soft compound tires. We cross the line and we go P3. But my teammate, 
is on provisional pole with medium compound tyres. <laughs> Latifi's on mediums. Kvyat's on mediums. Albon. Verstappen as well. I think Pierre Gasly tried to do it as well on mediums. Um, and either didn't make it into Q3 or he switched to softs. I, I didn't quite catch uh, where he ended up and what tyres he was on. But regardless, the AI have got some serious pace at this race circuit. We now move into Q3 where everyone is going to be on soft compound tyres. So the, the playing field is going to be leveled somewhat. But I... I I guess I shouldn't be too worried about the fact that people are starting on mediums for the race because the race is going to be started under wet conditions. So, realistically, the AI shouldn't have an advantage. They've just risked their starting position, their Q3 uh, attendance, for nothing, if the weather is to be believed. But um, anyway, I'm saving a set of soft compound tyres for the race. I actually had two sets, two brand new sets to use in this session. I'm only using the one because um, the rain is set to be present for the majority of the race. And I'm thinking I can go to intermediates, go from inters to softs as the race strategy. But uh, yeah, this lap itself so far has actually been pretty good. We are only down by three hundredths of a second. We were purple by like three tenths going to the first sector split. So we are absolutely on fire on the straights. Uh, not so much in the corners. We're getting some slipstream off Valtteri Bottas as we head into the final chicane. I think we might get pole position here because we're so fast in Sector 3 as well. Up to the line. And we're out of fuel. We're out of fuel. <laughs> what the hell is going on? We're in 10th for this Belgian Grand Prix. We're out... I didn't change the fuel load. I've been running 5 kilos of fuel through Q2 and Q3, but that was the first time all weekend that we ran out of fuel, randomly. You can go back and have a look, because uh, that was that was BS. We should have got pole position. Instead, we're starting from 10th. Tough luck there. It's not quite where we'd want to be on the grid, but chin up, it's not the end of the world. We're in Belgium once again for today's round of the Formula One World Championship. It's a race the great Ayrton Senna won six times. And in 2019, Charles Leclerc became the first driver to take their maiden win here since Michael Schumacher in 1992. And as always, a man with plenty of racing experience joins me in the commentary box. Today, it's Anthony Davidson. Tell me to surviving the melee of turn one. So how do you keep out of trouble when there's so much going on around you? There are three main things to worry about there, Crofty. Positioning, awareness, and discipline. First, you have to put your car in a bit of space and make sure you have room to react to what the others are doing. Then you have to watch your mirrors and listen to the sounds around you to get a sense of where everyone is. And finally, just don't get too greedy. Just because a gap exists doesn't always mean you should go for it. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. Alexander Albon put in a great lap yesterday and he'll start from pole position. And Nicholas Latifi completes the front row. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Kvyat, Sebastian Vettel, and Russell, Leclerc, Day, Norris and Lance Stroll, Sainz, Bottas, Esteban Ocon and Gasly, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Aitken, Magnussen, Antonio Giovinazzi and Antoine Hubert, De Vries, Ireland, Schumacher and Nobuharu Matsushita. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out. Then let's see who can prevail today. Now that we've got some points on the board, let's continue this form and aim for another top 10 finish. So it's not all bad for us as we move up two places thanks to grid penalties. Um, but also one thing I failed to mention is that we've gone for a bit of a compromised setup. I actually went for a wet setup, kind of. Um, three nine wings for the race, uh, which was a bit confusing in qualifying as to why I was so OP on the straights. Uh, because I went for more of a balanced uh, downforce approach, but still I was quite weak through mid the middle sector and a beast on the straights um, Which has always been the formula in career modes for a couple years now, but um, I tried chasing 
strengths in other areas and uh, the, the formula was still the same which was confusing but uh, anyway we're going to stretch the inters until the rain seizes up and then we go to softs away we go for 44 laps hashtag bless of the Belgian Grand Prix and a bit of wheel spin down into turn one we take the outside line which uh, nobody else opts to do meaning we can break as late as we like and get on the power nice and early up against Sebastian Vettel as we drag race down the hill Sebastian Vettel gives us a bit of a touch, I think, or maybe I squeezed him side by side through our rouge. And my goodness, we are in trouble. Uh, I thought we were going to be out of the race there with uh, the back end loss. Didn't know how much grip I had under me. First time running in these conditions all race weekend. And uh, we were doing it with a car on our inside with some front wing damage. So contact with Vettel on the run down into Eau Rouge and Radion. I think I did squeeze him too much. And with simulation damage, that's what happens. Uh, even the lightest contacts will uh, will give you some damage, and unfortunately, yeah, we weren't able to avoid it on, on this occasion. Uh, you know, normally, as you can see, I, I'm I'm really just getting a feel for the conditions with uh, 100 kilos worth of fuel on board, pretty much, and damage means we're sliding around everywhere. We're understeering left, right, and center. But um, to my earlier point, I'm, I'm normally very lucky when it comes with uh, light scrapes or taps of the barrier. We get away with it, but this time, not so lucky as uh, we struggle. We slip and slide through this. Oh my god! You can see how the rear end was starting to step out. Like the the instability was still there, even on three nine wings, which uh, normally is oh my goodness, is is the is the golden kind of wing set up for the wet but uh, you can see we're quite clearly struggling even with the front wing damage there's lots of oversteer I kept the throttle pin through there and we were able to hold on just about as we run through turn one for the third time and you can see I'm starting to lose touch with uh, Russell and Kvyat they're now three seconds up the road and I have absolutely nothing to offer in terms of pace who um, on I'm really struggling at just to get the nose in um, the, the, this is a problem even in the dry. Uh, with our setups, time trial setups, they just slide. The front end slides when the car is heavy with fuel. And this is even more so of a problem with the damage in the wet. Uh, you can see we're an absolute missile on the straights, hence the green and purple sectors uh, occasionally. But, um, you know, it's going to take some time for us to get up to speed. I feel like we're slowly starting to do that. But the damage has been done already in this first eight laps. Um, we've lost five seconds to Kvyat just up the road. Championship leader. He himself needs a good result today. He can't afford for Albon to get the win today. Otherwise, he'll be leading by some way. And so Albon himself isn't too far off the lead of the driver's standings. But uh, in the wet conditions in that Mercedes, he is absolutely flying. But uh, meanwhile... My teammate, Nicolas Latifi, is in third with Verstappen in P2. So, lots going on in this Belgian Grand Prix. I'm doing my best to just get in a rhythm, get in a groove. Uh, but it looks like the track is starting to dry up. You can you can visually notice that it's not raining anymore. Um, the only water we have left is just what's left standing on the circuit and off to the sides of uh, you know, the non-racing line areas of the circuit. So... It's only going to be a matter of time before we box for dry compound tires. Now, this is way, way earlier than we were anticipating uh, based on the forecast. I think we were going to be stopping around lap 30 for dry compound tires. We're 20 laps too early. As you can see, DRS has been dis uh, en enabled, meaning we're going to come into the pit lane for a change of tires. We're going to have to double stack behind our teammate, Nicholas Latifi, change the front wing. If I remember to uh, enable the yes option, which I think I did, into the pit lane. And there we go. Slow down for the box. Repair wing damage is on auto, which is not good because I don't think it's going to change it on auto. There goes my teammate onto soft compound tires. I'm frantically changing back to soft compound tires for this incoming stint. And the front wing is not going to get changed. We're going to have to deal with the front wing damage for the next 20 laps or so. Which is rather unfortunate. How we go onto the circuit? We're in P8 on circuit. Hubert and Sainz are still out there on Inters. So 
Um, that's not going to be fun for those guys as we catch up to them through the final chicane. They've lost the pit stop <laughs> just by doing an extra lap at Spa. So big Fs to those guys. But um, yeah, I was originally planning to go on the mediums and maybe go to the end of the Grand Prix. But uh, given that for some reason I didn't put it on yes for the change front wing option. I thought I did that uh, on lap one or two. It turns out I didn't. So I had to change to softs because I didn't want to do the rest of the Grand Prix on medium compound tires on a damaged wing. That just would not have been fun. Speaking of not fun, there's Max Verstappen. He's now out of the Grand Prix from second place in this race. And uh, he already didn't have a great Silverstone race. Uh, dropping quite far back in the championship. His championship hopes are going to take a massive blow now because of that. Nicolas Latifi now flying for Marduk Motorsport. He now assumes second in this Belgian Grand Prix. Kvyat now moves up to P4. We're up in a fifth. And uh, <laughs> it seems to be all happening now as we have another yellow flag going up the hill. Is that my teammate? No, I think it's a Ferrari. One of the Ferraris is out. It must be George Russell who is out of the Belgian Grand Prix. And the yellow flag means that Pierre Gasly can't overtake me. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> we'll hold uh, fourth place. So we're getting absolutely gifted all these places in this race, despite not having any pace to, uh, to hold station. We are falling backwards in this race. And um, we desperately need a safety car. There goes Gasly round the outside into the final chicane. We're actually going to out traction him there. I don't know why he didn't muscle us out there. That's the AI on 2020 being a bit weak. Hopefully they're a bit stronger on the 2021 game. At least when it comes to side-by-side -side battling, that'll have to be wait to be seen. But um, yeah, there goes Pierre Gasly. He's got pace and he just sets the fastest up of the Grand Prix. So yeah, a couple of mistakes in this race. The uh, Well, getting damage on lap one, then not fixing the damage in the last pit stop. But I'd have to say the setup option as well hasn't been great. Going to 3-9 wings, um, anticipating a majorly wet race for the majority of it. Uh, we only got 10 laps of rain. So we're running around with extra downforce, slowing us down on the straights and not really gaining anything back in the corners relative to the AI. If I had to put a number on it, I'd say we're probably like half a second. Well, we were at least half a second a lap slower than the AI in the wet. Um, where I was hoping we'd be strong, we were bloody terrible. It's a bit better in the dry, but um, now we've finally got the wing changed. Let's hope that there's a safety car which can bring us back onto, you know, equal terms with our teammates and the race leaders. Because uh, without it, we are a good 20, maybe more seconds behind where we should be in this race. As we now catch up to Lance Stroll and the Racing Point. Uh, these guys immediately around us haven't made a stop. And uh, right there, testing out the ultimate brake upgrade, which, by the way, feels absolutely phenomenal. I found myself in practice and qualifying, actually, braking a little bit too early into the bus stop chicane. That's how good the brakes are now. But uh, not that you'd really know. We haven't really had the chance to overtake people until now. Here's Signs, who was uh, running around on the Inter on a dry track. Not too long ago, we now overtake him round the outside at the bus stop chicane. Thank you very much. We are now back in the points. Ocon and Aiken running side by side. Again, these guys need to make another stop. But uh, if they keep this up, they're going to be going up Arusha and Radion side by side. And it looks like that is going to be the case. Both of them boosting on the run up to said corners. And we're going to get a double slipstream here. Hopefully some DRS action as well. And we might get a double overtake here. Here we go. Look at the overspeed to the outside. And we now move up into eighth place. Cutting off Ocon in the process. I think we might have actually made contact there. Not intentionally though. But that's exactly what happens side by side for these two guys. They held each other up so much. And we just said thank you very much. P8 is mine. As you can see Ocon's front wing is absolutely battered by the way. There was contact between myself and him, but uh, it was so light that uh, the game really didn't register it, thankfully. Otherwise, that would have been a monumental crash. Anyway, 14 laps to go. Uh, putting in some purple sectors, which is nice to see. Bottas emerges from the pit lane, as does Lando Norris. So we've been jumped by Bottas. He's actually been behind us the whole Grand Prix. 
thanks to his grid penalty. He's now on softs, and it's going to finish the race strongly. I, I actually don't think I'm going to be able to have an answer up against that. The Mercedes is still a better car than ours. Um, better setup, I'd say, this race weekend, and on better tyres. We do set the fast start of the Grand Prix. But now this is Bottas's time to shine. This is his first flying lap out of the pit lane. And as you can see there, he is now broken outside of DRS. And uh, that's a solid GG on that battle. So now, uh, the focus shifts to Lando Norris, who's behind me on the soft compound tyres as well in the Renault. Um, thankfully, a car that's not quite as fast as ours. So it's going to take us a little bit of time to... I don't know, keep him at bay, but thankfully um, his tyres wore out faster than ours and we were actually able to stretch out the margin to three seconds as we now head on to the closing laps of the Grand Prix. So pace got better towards the end uh, thanks to the fuel load burning off and the tyres not really wearing out. But that was, that was the race. Albon wins the Grand Prix. Um, formidable today. No one had an answer. Nicholas Latifi, though, is going to get himself on the podium for Marduk Motorsport. So, Nicholas is coming on strong in the second half of the season. For me, it's just been just a few mistakes here and there that uh, have really cost us at the end of the day. Big points lost in the championship, but still a long way to go. All right, race over. Take care of the car on the way in. Yes, another historic win under their belts. Well done to the team at Mercedes. So, Anthony, what made the difference out there today? Well, time management probably played quite a large role in the outcome of this one. As ever, it's not just about speed, it's all about maintaining that speed consistently over a stint, over a race distance. So being able to keep up the lap times while still being smooth on the controls and gentle on the tyres, that's really where the race has won today. So after a magnificent race, we can now see the drivers making their way to the podium. Once again, it's the Silver Arrows who take top spot, a well-earned victory for Mercedes. That's now two races in a row where we've been outraced, outpaced, outsmarted by our teammate, Nicholas Latifi, turning out to be the strongest teammate we've had at Malduk Motorsport, <laughs> which is pretty crazy. Danny Kvyat actually got up to second in the end, so um, yeah, he gains... A little bit of face in this race and continues that good run for the championship though i think albon is now leading the championship based on how close he was heading into this grand prix p6 for us not a good day if i'm honest um too many mistakes uh damage on lap one compromised setup which gave us no benefit in the rain gave us no benefit through the middle sector and then uh the rain went away way too quickly so if we run a normal low downforce setup, we might have been a bit stronger and I didn't get damage. I could have been a lot further up the road, but uh, hindsight is a beautiful thing. We now move on to Monza, which is the next race and honestly one of my strongest tracks on the calendar. So I'm hoping uh, or almost expecting a race win at that circuit, if that's, uh, that's a bit of a bad thing to say. But we're going to continue to upgrade the car and uh, we're going to... Basically trim off all the downforce and make sure we are a threat on the straights. Let's make sure we bounce back well. But yeah, we, we actually got really lucky with the George Russell DNF, with the Max Verstappen uh, failure as well. We could have been in 8th place and we could have lost even more points to Albon, Kvyat, etc. in the standings. We're now 19 points behind with uh, what I think is only 3 races to go. So it's a 10 race calendar. Goes by quickly. So uh, let's make the most of it while we've still got it on F1 2020 career mode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to see plenty more racing game content. And, uh, you know, if you're subscribed, you're going to see all the, all the new game stuff. But, uh, yeah, a lot to do in the drivers, but especially the constructors. 76 behind <laughs> uh, Red Bull and Mercedes. So let's... Make sure that Nicholas is continuing to fire on all cylinders and uh, we might have a chance. An outside chance, but it's still a chance nonetheless. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Until the next race, the Italian Grand Prix. I'll see you next time.